Welcome to this video. We're going to take a look and observe what happens in three of the main forms of renewable energy. First we're going to look at the solar energy, and then we'll take a look at hydroelectric energy, hydropower, and then wave energy or wave power. The first that we can look at is something called a solar heating panel. Now this is not the only way to harness solar energy. It's the first of two different ways that we'll see. The first type I already mentioned the name, it's a solar heating panel, and what it does is it changes or converts the solar energy, which strikes down, into thermal energy. So this is the top of a roof, and the light comes and it hits, the rays hit, and those rays are absorbed by these pipes, and inside the pipes there's water being pumped through. So as the pumping, as the water is pumped through, it's warmed by the really hot pipes. So we convert the solar energy into thermal energy. And here's the second kind of device that can be used to harness the solar energy. Instead of heating up water, we can actually generate electricity straight from the sun. There's this really cool thing, there's this really cool thing that happens when you shine light on a metal surface. Here's the light, it strikes the metal surface, the photons are absorbed by electrons, and then they go shooting off. In much simpler terms, here's what's happening. A current is produced when light shines on a metal. And we call that the photoelectric effect. So back to this picture, what does the photoelectric effect have to do with what's shown on these roofs, on this roof? What's on the roof are what we call solar cells, or photovoltaic cells. And confusingly, these are called solar panels just like solar heating panels. So the term solar panel is kind of generic. It refers to these, which are photo photovoltaic cells, and it also refers to these, which are, photo, uh, which are solar heating panels. So to avoid confusion, I'm actually going to take away the term solar panels because that's a little bit too general. It refers to solar cells, photovoltaic cells, and also solar heating panels. So a photovoltaic cell is more than just this flat layer. Uh, it actually has several layers. And what you see right there, the top layer, is called the in-type conductor, or the conduction layer. And there's more to them than just that first top conduction layer. But before we get into the details of the layers and what happens, what's the energy transformation that happens in a solar cell? These are called cells because like a battery, which is another, another type of cell, like a battery, we generate from the solar energy electricity or electrical energy. So just like a battery, solar cells produce electricity. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this video, which is a pretty good simulation or animation of what happens inside of a photovoltaic cell or a solar cell. First, remember, what we were looking at on, si on the top of the roof was just the top layer, the conduction layer. The conduction layer is in red, and we're going to call it the conduction layer, not the in-type layer. So the conduction layer is in red, so let me take this off then, uh, we'll keep it. The conduction layer is in red, and down here in blue is what we call the, the valence layer. The valence layer contains electrons. When light is shining down from the sun, the light comes in, it passes through the n-type, or the conduction layer, through the conduction layer, and then it's absorbed by one of the valence electrons in the valence layer. And once that happens, current flows. So let's watch and see how this works. Bam. Let's watch again. It goes through the n-type and then the photon reaches the p-type. So there's a couple things that happen. The photon comes, it passes completely through the n-type, it hits one of the electrons in the p-type, as described by the photoelectric, e photoelectric effect, an electron is ejected. And because of this material, something interesting happens. The electron 
bounces up to the end type and it doesn't have enough energy to go back across a gap between the two. So it's bounced up to the end type and it wants to join back up with this positive ion that's produced and the only way is to go through this circuit. And this circuit has a load which produces, because of the flowing electricity, the load produces an electrical output that's you know sent to your home. So let's watch again. Let's whoops, let's pull it back over to here. Here comes the photon through the n-type to the p-type. And when it strikes the p-type, an electron is ejected, that's the red, and a positive ion forms. The electron wants to join back up with its buddy because they're attracted, negative and positive charge are attracted. And the only way to get back to its buddy is to go through the circuit producing useful electrical output. Now we're going to take a very brief look at hydroelectric energy. Here's the basic principle. Water starts at a high level in what's called a reservoir, or the upper part of a river or lake. And then the water is released in a controlled fashion. There's like a floodgate. You open the floodgate, the water pours out through a pipe. And on the way down, as it passes through the pipe from high to low, the water which is flowing rotates a turbine. So this type of energy is what we use inside of dams. And they can be produced on lakes, they can be produced on rivers, like you see here. Uh, they can even be produced in man-made reservoirs. So these are used in many different places around the country and the globe. The basic principle is what's described on the left. You've got this giant reservoir of water which is held at an upper level above a turbine. The water flows through this pipe and as it goes down it gains speed. It finally comes at the end to a turbine and the turbine spins. So the water is pushing on the fan, fan blades and right here uh, and then it goes down. Oops, there's a guy. <laughs> uh, okay, this right here is connected, this, this uh, turbine is connected, as we know, to a magnet which rotates inside of a coil. And through that rotation of the magnet within the coil, we produce electricity. So what's the energy transformation for hydroelectric energy? The water starts high up. It has gravitational potential energy. And then it falls down, it gains kinetic, and on the way it rotates a turbine producing kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy, of the turbine. Okay, the last one for us really quickly is wave energy. Waves have crests. The crests are what surfers are on. They're high up, they're elevated above the regular water level. And so there's a way to harness that potential energy. Consider a coast. Right? As the waves come in, they crash against this coastal line right here. And when they do, the water level goes up and down and up and down. Right? We see the water crashing and it goes up and down. People built a device which very cleverly captures that up and down, back and forth, the oscillating motion of a wave. You see that there's an opening. Let's go back. There's an opening right down here at the bottom. And that's where water from the ocean flows up. And as the waves come and go, ebb and flow, this little column of water right here oscillates up and down and up and down. And here's the interesting thing. When the water oscillates up, it pushes air through this path and out through the top. And then when the water level falls back down, air is sucked in through the same path. So we see that in the simulation, in the, in the animation, with these white lines. So watch for those, yeah, air is going out, and as this falls, this water level falls, the air is sucked back in. And so air is moving at sometimes a quite a fast rate through this column, this pipe in between. And what's inside of that pipe? You guessed it. It's a turbine with fan blades. So as the air goes in and out, the turbine rotates. These turbines can be made in very, very clever ways so that they always rotate in the same direction, regardless of whether air is going in or out.
So you might be wondering how that's possible. Here's a video of an actual uh, device or structure like what we've been describing. We're actually just going to look inside that pipe where the turbine's located. So you see the blades are rotating and they're going extra slow because there was a cameraman inside. And watch what happens here in just a moment. When air starts moving the other way, these blades, so now we're looking down the pipe, these blades flip. See that? So when air moves from going in to going out, the fan blades actually flip. And that flipping allows the turbine to continue rotating in the same direction even as the air changes directions. So what's the fancy name for this device, which has a, a water column that oscillates up and down, generating airflow through the turbine? It's called an oscillating water column, and that's how we capture wave energy. Inside the column, we have two types of energy being used to produce electrical. There's the gravitational potential energy going up and down of the, uh, of the water column, and then there's the kinetic energy inside as well of the passing air. So this uses both gravitational uh, potential energy and kinetic energy to generate electricity.